Hey everyone, what I'm going to do is go through our crystal violet uh, lab, our kinetics lab, uh, using the time-based mode. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to figure out the uh, order of the reaction, the rate constant, and some of the analysis. So what I've done is I've put my lab quest up and I've got my spectroviz, which you can kind of barely see in the background there, it's upside down. Um, and uh, I've already run my blank. And uh, uh, what I'm going to do is go ahead and choose the wavelength that's more, most appropriate here. So I've got a little cuvette of crystal violet. I'm going to set that in my spectroviz. I'm in full spectrum mode, and we're going to hit play here. And, uh, and what we're going to have to notice is that we have a nice peak here. However, let's go ahead and press stop, that if I were to choose the peak at, uh, towards the top there, the absorbance is over 1. So that wouldn't be good for us because absorbance and concentration are not uh, proportional uh, above one. So what we're going to do is kind of pick something kind of on the shoulder here, um, somewhere between maybe 0.9 and 1. It wouldn't matter as long as we're definitely like below one. So we'll go a little bit lower than that. Oops. So... We know in this lab, I better use my right hand. So we know in this lab uh, that the way that this is going to work is that we're going to be mixing our crystal violet with our sodium hydroxide. And we know that our concentration uh, uh, of our solution, it's not going to get any darker. It's only going to get lighter. So that's why I can feel free to choose my wavelength that's uh, there and my absorbance of 0.96. So now what I've got, I've got some crystal violet in this beaker, and I'm gonna pour some 0.1 molar uh, sodium hydroxide. Uh, so this is, a bit, this is quite a bit stronger than what's in the lab, and the idea uh, with, our, with our higher concentration of sodium hydroxide is that it's such a higher concentration that, uh, compared to our crystal violet that um, it basically has remained constant. So when we look at the change that happens, we can say that's really the order with respect to the crystal violet. Uh, the crystal violet concentration is 2.5 times 10 to the negative fifth molar. So very similar to what's written in the lab. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, oh, I better grab another cuvette. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour in my sodium hydroxide into the beaker. I'm uh, going to mix it, pour it into a cuvette, and then start collecting our data. But before I do that, we have to change the mode. So I'm going to go up to the top left icon. I'm going to change the mode to time-based. And 200 seconds should probably do it. Um, and just kind of make sure that this is taking samples pretty often here, which it is. Okay, so we can save it. And I'm just going to call it uh, C the lab all right and save so all right so we're going to pour this together okay we're going to kind of give it a little swirl to mix pour this into a cuvette okay and put this into our spectra viz and start collecting data So it's going to be about 200 seconds here before we get a graph here. Um, it might look like maybe something's going wrong at this point, uh, but really it isn't. It's just sort of the scale is up here at two. Um, if halfway through is one, we can see this is below that, and the absorbance started around uh, 0 0.37, 0 0.4, somewhere around there, so we're kind of in good shape. When you're watching the video, you can probably fast forward kind of to the end once we see the shape of our curve. Um, but since we have a little time, we can just kind of review a little bit. Um, once we get our data here, what we do then do is look at it and determine wh where we're gonna have the linear relationship. Um, if it's absorbance versus time, we know that absorbance under one is proportional to concentration. So if we get a straight line uh, going down, that's going to tell us that it's a um, that it is a, um, um, a 
zero order reaction. If we have to integrate it and uh, do the natural log of absorbance, then we're gonna know that it's gonna be uh, first order. If we have to do one over the absorbance, it's going to be um, second order. So those are things that we're gonna do. And we'll show you how to do the calculated columns in our, uh, in our table. And that's gonna be a powerful kind of tool. Uh, it'd be a pain in the butt to have to uh, put this into, um, put this into you know, your graphing calculator or Google Sheets or Microsoft Excel and the LabQuest will do it for you. So it's a pretty awesome piece of equipment that we've got. As we kind of look at the, the graph here, it's a little bit hard to tell. It looks pretty linear, um, but again, the scale is so big, it's really hard to tell. And even um, the axis down here is at negative 0.5, which is really gonna skew our, our data here. So um, if, uh, if our data is what we hope it to be, um, we should really be able to tell um, if there is a uh, kind of a slight curve to it or whether it's a, a straight, uh, line, a linear relationship going down. So we'll, we'll see here in a moment. One nice thing about the, um, the lab quest is that after this, they generally auto scale uh, to fit the screen. Uh, if they don't, you can go under the uh, graph, op uh, graph and then graph, op graph options and change it. It's a little hard to see with the, uh, um, the angle of the lab quest, but there we go. So uh, hopefully what we can see here, um, and I'll kind of tilt it up here for a better angle. Uh, so to my eye, it doesn't look like this is a, uh, a linear relationship. So we could always test that. We could analyze it and we could look at, so if we go under analyze, curve fit, and select the absorbance and choose a linear fit, um, you know, right there, you can tell really that uh, it doesn't really, the line doesn't match the curve of our data. So, um, and our correlation is decent, but it's not great. Um, and so let's go ahead and, and cancel that. I don't think that's the relationship. We're gonna go into our table on the top right, and we're gonna create a new calculated column, and we're gonna tell it to do the natural log of absorbance to see if we have, um, so, so natural log of our absorbance here, uh, there, and so that's gonna tell us if it's linear. So yeah, it looks very, very linear there. And if we were to do the, um, if we were to do the curve fit and check it, I think we're gonna have a really high correlation value. Um, so linear fit, yeah, that's really, really good. And we see the line pretty much matches our data exactly. Um, so what I'm gonna do then is I'm going to then, just to, uh, for poops and giggles, we're gonna look at a new calculated column and we're gonna do one over the concentration, which is A over X. Um, and uh, or absorbance. And we see that it's upwards, but it's sort of a curve too. And again, what we can do is always look at um, a, a linear fit to see if it matches. And again, similar to zero order, um, it, didn't, um, it didn't really work out um, very linearly. It's, this is decent, but it's not nearly like the first order was. So, um, and one kind of top tip for you to switch back and forth is you just want to go tap on the Y axis and we can again go back to our first calculated column, which is the um, natural log data and we can analyze it, get the curve fit, uh, the linear fit. And then the, uh, what we want to remember is the relationship between um, this, uh, the slope here and the rate constant so your slope is your rate constant. Um, so another piece of valuable data. So graphing this uh, with, a, uh, uh, with the natural log function not only tells us the order, but also tells us the uh, rate constant of our reaction. All right. 
Um, and there's other fun things that we can do with the data if we wanted to. Uh, we can look at the data table itself uh, and also maybe look at uh, half-life, looking at when your concentration goes down by a half, looking at two data points there um, as kind of another thing that we could possibly do. Uh, but uh, that's your crystal violet and sodium hydroxide kinetics lab, uh, looking at the data time-based. Uh, thanks for watching.